What's up you freaking geniuses? So in this video I'm going to teach you how to divide radicals that have variables and exponents in them. And we're specifically going to focus on rationalizing the denominator. Okay, so here we have 5 over the square root of x. Okay, so whenever you rationalize the denominator that just means you're trying to get rid of this radical symbol, okay? So the way that you do that is you multiply the top and the bottom by whatever you have in the denominator right here. Okay, so we have the square root of x, so I'm going to multiply the top by the square root of x and the bottom by the square root of x, okay? And then we can simplify some things here. So on top we have 5 times the square root of x, okay? So 5 times the square root of x, and then that's going to go over the bottom over here. So here we have the square root of x times the square root of x, which is just equal to x, okay? And in case that doesn't make sense, well, we can just use numbers for a quick example. So if I had something like the square root of 4 times the square root of 4, this would just be equal to 4, okay? And to prove it to you, what is the square root of 4? Well, that's equal to 2, right? So then here we really have 2 times 2, which is, again, equal to 4, okay? So that's why the square root of 4 times the square root of 4 is equal to 4. So the square root of x times the square root of x is just equal to x, okay? Now, as you can see, we still have this square root of x in the numerator, but that's totally fine. We can have that in the numerator. We just can't have these radicals in the denominator, okay? So then this would basically be your simplified answer, 5 root x over x. Okay, so here we have 5 over the square root of x squared, okay? So here you might just be tempted to multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of x squared, right, to rationalize it. But the thing is, this square root right here is already rational, okay? Because we can take the square root of x squared because the, the square root of x squared is simply equal to x, okay? So then here, our simplified answer would just be 5 over x, okay? And it works the same way with numbers because if we had something like 5 over the square root of 4, well, again, this is rational, right? We don't have to multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of 4 because we know what the square root of 4 is, right? 4 is a perfect square. So the square root of 4 is just equal to 2, right? So then this simplified would just be 5 over 2, okay? So it's important to realize that whenever you have perfect squares within your radicals like this, you don't have to rationalize them because they are already rational, okay? So just to clear this up, um, perfect squares for numbers would be, you know, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, right? We can keep going. And for variables, it would just be x squared, x to the fourth, x to the sixth, x to the eighth, x to the tenth. Okay, we could keep going there too. So when we're talking about variables, a perfect square would just be something that has an even exponent attached to it. Okay, so whenever you see anything like this, you don't have to rationalize it because it's already rational. We can just take the square root of all of these things, right? Because with the numbers, right, the square root of one is just equal to one. The square root of 4 is just equal to 2. Square root of 9 is just 3, right? Square root of 16 is 4. And then with the variables, the square root of x squared is just x. The square root of x to the 4th is x squared. The square root of x to the 6th is x cubed. Okay, so just realize you don't have to do anything crazy when you see things like this, okay? Because we can just take the normal square root of them. Okay, so here we have the square root of 8x cubed over the square root of 4x squared, right? So you might be tempted to multiply the top and the bottom by this denominator, right? The square root of 4x squared. But if you notice something, 4 is a perfect square and x squared is also a perfect square, okay? So we don't have to multiply this thing by the top and the bottom. Instead, we can just simplify it, okay? So if we simplified it, uh, we can basically split this up into two different square roots. So we can split this up into the square root of just 4 times the square root of just x squared. Okay, so I'm basically just splitting it up from the numbers and the variables, right? Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing on the top just to simplify it also. Okay, so we're going to split it up into the square root of 8 times the square root of x cubed. Okay, and now we can simplify some things, right? So on the bottom, first of all, what is the square root of 4? Well, that's equal to 2, right? So then in the denominator, we're going to have a 2, and then we're multiplying that by the square root of x squared, which again is just x, 
right? So then we're just gonna have an x right there. Okay, now in the numerator, we have the square root of eight times the square root of x cubed. So those are obviously not perfect squares, right? But can we simplify them? Well, we can, okay, because eight, right? Thinking about the number eight, we can break that down into two factors, right? We can break that down into four times two, okay? I can also break that down into eight times one, but the specific reason I wanna break it down into four times two is because four right here is a perfect square, okay? And we like perfect squares because they simplify our math, right? So just like I can break eight down into four times two, I can break the square root of eight down into the square root of four times the square root of two. Okay, cool. So we simplified the square root of eight. Can we simplify the square root of x cubed? Yes, we can, okay? So x cubed, we can break down into x squared times x, okay? And the reason we wanna do this is because now we have a perfect square, right? x squared is a perfect square. So just like I can break x cubed down into x squared times x, Again, the square root of x cubed, I can break down into the square root of x squared times the square root of x. Okay, and now we can simplify some things. Okay, so first of all, the square root of four, that's equal to two, right? Square root of two, we can't simplify that anymore, so that'll stay like that. And then here, the square root of x squared, we can simplify that to just x, right? And then here, the square root of x, we can't simplify that anymore, so we'll leave that as is also, okay? So then here in the numerator, we have two times the square root of two times x times the square root of x, okay? But if you notice one other thing, we can actually cancel some stuff out because we have a two in the numerator and a two in the denominator, okay? And same thing over here, we have an x in the numerator and an x in the denominator, okay? So then on top, all we're actually left with is the square root of two times the square root of x, right? So the square root of two times the square root of x. And we don't have anything left in the denominator, right? So this is all we're left with, the square root of two times the square root of x. Now, one way we can simplify this a little bit more is since they're both underneath radicals, we can actually combine them under just one big radical, okay? So the square root of two times the square root of x is the same thing as the square root of two times x. Okay, so then this would be your simplified answer, the square root of 2x. Okay, so here we have 3 over 7 times the square root of x. Okay, so as you can see, this one's a little bit different, right? Because we have this 7 out here in front that we're multiplying by the square root of x. Okay, but in order to rationalize the denominator, you actually don't have to worry about this 7. All we have to do is worry about the radical, right? So we're going to multiply the top and the bottom by this radical right here, okay, the square root of x. Okay, so multiply the top by the square root of x and the bottom by the square root of x, okay? So now if we simplify this, on top we have three times the square root of x, right? So three times the square root of x, and that's gonna go over. Uh, well, we just have this seven right here, so we'll bring that over. And then here, the square root of x times the square root of x is equal to just x. So we're gonna multiply by just x, okay? Now, there's nothing we can simplify, right? Three and seven, there's nothing right there that we can simplify. So this would be your final answer. Three root x over seven x. All right, so here we have the square root of x plus the square root of seven over root x minus root seven. Okay, so as you can see, this one's a little bit different, right? Because we basically have an expression down here in the denominator, right? So in order to rationalize the denominator down here, we have to do it a little bit differently. And what we have to do is multiply by the conjugate. And all that means is we're gonna multiply by this exact same thing on the top and on the bottom, but the only difference is we're gonna change the sign, okay? So since we have a subtraction sign down here, we're going to change it to an addition symbol, okay? So we're gonna multiply the top and the bottom again by this thing down here, right? The square root of x, plus the square root of seven, and the same thing down here, the square root of x plus the square root of seven. Okay, so in order to multiply all this crap together, you're going to have to FOIL. Okay, so first, outer, inner, last, right? So starting with the top, we're gonna go 
first, right? So the square root of x times the square root of x is just equal to x, okay? So then we're gonna go outer. So the square root of x times the square root of seven is equal to the square root of seven x, right? We can combine those again. And they're both positive, so we're gonna put a plus. So plus the square root of seven x, okay? Now we're gonna go inner. So the square root of seven times the square root of x, again, is this exact same thing, right? The square root of seven x. And then we're gonna go last. So the square root of seven times the square root of seven is equal to just seven, right? So then we're gonna have plus seven right there. Okay, and then that's gonna go over the bottom right here. And again, we're gonna have to FOIL all this crap together. Okay, so first of all, we're gonna go first, right? So square root of x times the square root of x, that's equal to just x. Then the square root of x times the square root of seven is equal to, again, the square root of seven x. And then we're gonna go inner, right? So negative root seven times root x is going to be negative root seven x. Okay, and then we're gonna go last, so again, the square root of seven times the square root of seven is equal to just seven, right? But here we have a negative and here we have a positive. So a negative times a positive is a negative, right? So then here we're gonna have minus seven. Okay, now we can simplify this one more time, right? So on top, uh, what can we combine? Uh, well, we just have this x by itself, right? And then here in the middle, we have the square root of seven x plus the square root of seven x. So we have two of them, right? So we can write it as two times the square root of seven x, right? Because it's like saying five plus five is the same thing as two times five, okay? And then we just have this plus seven at the end, right? Now on the bottom, again, uh, combining like terms here, we have an x, that's the only one, so we'll just put it there. And then here we have positive root seven x minus root seven x, right? So these just cancel out and just go to zero. And then we just have this minus seven at the end, okay? So then this right here would be your final answer. So x plus two root seven x plus seven over x minus seven. So if you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any other questions or wanna see any other examples, just let me know in the comment section below. Also, there's a couple playlists attached that I think you'll find helpful. So definitely check those out and I'll see you there.